Sandra Lipschitz was born on June 22, 1944, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to Jewish working class parents during a time when Rosie the Riveter was still kicking butt in factories all over the U.S. As Sandra grew up, the war ended and all the Rosies were sent back home and the workforce was dominated by men once again. But unlike most women, Sandra's mother worked outside the home as a secretary and was the dominant figure inside the Lipschitz home as well. Sandra grew up planning to follow in her working mother's footsteps and work in an office. In 1961, Sandra entered Margaret Morrison Carnegie College, the female-only division of what is now Carnegie Mellon University. She chose psychology as a major, but was shocked when an advisor suggested she become a psychiatrist. It was a pretty high-status job for a girl. The 1960s saw some big changes when it came to feminism and gender roles, and Sandra would soon be a part of that change. While at Carnegie, Sandra fell in love with her social psychology professor, Daryl Bem, but she had no interest in giving up her potential psychology career, and she turned down his marriage proposal. Professor Bem ultimately won her over with the promise of a marriage of equals, where they would share equally in making decisions, doing household chores, supporting each other's careers, and parenting. They had two children and remained married until the day she died. If Daryl and Sandra Bem's marriage was revolutionary, Sandra really blew people's minds with her work in gender studies and androgyny. In 1974, while the BEMs were both teaching at Stanford, she developed the BEM Sexual Inventory, known as the BSRI, based on the assumption that each of us likely exhibit both male and female characteristics. Participants were asked to rate themselves on 60 attributes using a seven point scale. 20 attributes were considered feminine in the 1970s. 20 were considered masculine and 20 were just filler attributes. Bem believed that a fully functioning adaptive human being is most likely to have traits traditionally associated with both males and females, meaning that most human beings are androgynous. This was groundbreaking. After the BSRI, the BEMS moved to Cornell University in 1978 because Stanford would not give Sanford tenure. At Cornell in 1981, Sandra Bem developed the gender schema theory to illustrate how each of us are socialized according to gender stereotypes starting at a very young age, at home, in school, and through the media, just for starters. Gender schema theory showed that society rewards boys and girls when they adhere to society's gender stereotypes. She believed that traditional gender roles are unnaturally restrictive for both men and women, since the BSRI showed that the most mentally healthy among us are likely to exhibit characteristics traditionally associated with both sexes. The irony of Sandra Bem's legacy is that she was a part of such a sweeping gender revolution that her groundbreaking contributions often get lost in the feminist timeline she lived through. What is extraordinary about Sandra Bem is that she practiced what she preached, living and dying outside gender stereotypes and convention. She and Daryl began living apart during the 1990s, but remained married and very close until her death. In 2010, after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, she became determined to not let her mind die before her body. Four years later, after spending a lovely evening with Daryl, she took phenobarbital and died in her sleep with her husband by her side. The following year, Daryl married his partner of 20 years, Ithaca College professor of communication, performance studies, and queer studies, Bruce Henderson. Mm -hmm.